So yeah, somebody, for some reason, thought it would be a good idea to build a Ryzen-powered mini PC that looks like a Cybertruck, and right now what you're seeing on screen is Cybertruck 2077, I mean Cyberpunk 2077, running at 1080p on this little thing. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Cyber Mini PC. Now when I first saw this, I actually thought it was like an April Fool's joke or something like that. But lo and behold, this is actually a real product. Their Indiegogo will be launching really soon. And to tell you the truth, I'm not a fan of uh, Teslas or anything like that. But I did think that this was pretty interesting because it's kind of the first time we've really seen this. And in this video, we've got a lot to go over, a lot to test. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft. But the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. They will be offering two different CPU models. What we have here is the Ryzen 7 8845HS. And I gotta say, they did pay attention to detail when it comes to what we have here. The body is constructed of metal. It's aluminum, not stainless steel like the real Cybertruck. But you know, to go with metal here instead of plastic definitely had to cost them a lot more. And to get this manufactured, it is a more involved process. The windows are plastic. I was actually hoping they'd be glass here. It's got working front and rear lights when it's powered up, and all four doors open up for some reason. If you're into the Cybertruck and like the look of it, I mean, they did a pretty good job here capturing all the details. They've even got the interior covered here. Back seats, looks like they've got a little footrest right there. I've never seen inside of a Cybertruck, so I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I mean, it looks like this is something that would be inside of one. And check out this tailgate. So it does flip down and it's got the built-in ramp. Not sure why this would be here, but it is. Flipping the back bumper down does reveal all of the IO. We've got our power input. It comes with a 100 watt power supply, USB port, full size HDMI, dual USB type C and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Taking a look at the bottom of the truck or the mini PC, We've got another USB port. You can actually see through the grate in the middle. We've got that fan with our exhaust over here. Looks like they were going to add speakers to this, but with this unit here, there are no speakers. Removing the hatch over here reveals our M.2 SSD. This came with a one terabyte pre-installed. And initially when seeing this online, I figured they just shoved a mini PC inside of a Cybertruck frame. But if you take a look, this is a dual fan setup. The motherboard on this is much longer than any other mini PC out there. So I do want to pull this thing apart and see what's going on inside, but there's a ton of screws that I need to get out first. All right, so I think I've removed all of them. We can pull the shell off. Now we're right down to the interior. There's a little LED controller board up front for the front and rear lights. We'll just remove this. And we do need to slide it up over those rear lights. And there it is. So, what this looks like to me is uh, a motherboard from a laptop, which would make sense. I mean, it's much longer. We've got a dual fan cooler system on this unit. And yeah, taking a closer look at this definitely resembles a motherboard out of a laptop. We've even got a battery connector and an extra M.2 slot down here that we can't use when this is installed inside of the Cybertruck. Dual channel DDR5 running at 5600 megahertz. This one has 32 gigs pre-installed. You could always upgrade it if you wanted to pull this thing apart. And of course, like I mentioned, we've got that Ryzen 7 8845HS. Okay, so I've got everything plugged in. We've got our power, HDMI, got a keyboard and mouse. To turn this thing on, all we need to do is press down on the front of the Cybertruck. It's got spring-loaded front suspension with that power button. Front lights are on, and if we take a look at the back, these are also on. Once you power it up, those front and rear lights are working. I know it's a bit hard to see here, but right now the unit is booting into Windows. 
So I've definitely got some setup to do. Need to make sure all of the drivers are updated. I'll install some applications and games to test on the Cybertruck Mini PC. So getting right down to it, everything's been working fine so far, but there is one thing I changed in the BIOS. If you take a look at the Radeon 780M dedicated GPU memory, it's up to eight. Out of the box, this was set at three. I just kind of like upping it. Plus, I mean, we've got 32 gigs here, so we might as well. First thing I always like checking out with these mini PCs is the TDP. Usually manufacturer doesn't tell you. So if we run a CPU-Z stress test, it's gonna max out all eight cores. This does go up to 54 watts and it seems to be, you know, across the board with it. The fan does spin up just a little bit, but we are putting quite a load on that CPU. But while gaming under everyday normal use, we're not gonna put this kind of load on that CPU. So temps have been pretty decent with this little unit. And of course, at 54 watts, we can reach those clocks on the GPU and CPU that we need with this little iGPU. But yeah, overall, with this 8845HS, you should be able to get most of everything that you do on a regular basis on your PC done, including some gaming. Let's check out some 4K video playback, and I'm going to be using Chrome for this. And for this, make sure 4K, stats for nerds, full screen. And going into this with the AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS, I knew we'd have more than enough power for 4K video playback from YouTube, or if you want to stream it from an external drive, internal drive, you're not going to have any issues. One drop frame so far using stats for nerds up at the top left hand corner, that usually happens on the initial load in. But yeah, I mean, it's going to handle 4K. You want to do some web browsing, email checking, document editing, that 8845HS is going to handle it. So yeah, not too bad. Next thing I wanna take a look at are some benchmarks. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 6, single core, 2,573, multi, 12,488. Looking good here, and we could get more. Again, we're at 54 watts on that TDP. Here's 3D Mark Night Raid, coming in with a 26,976. And finally, Time Spy with a 3,263. And these scores are definitely falling right in line with other 8845HS powered mini PCs that we've tested at this kind of wattage. So we are getting the full performance out of the Cybertruck right now. And speaking of Cybertruck, I wanted to test out Cyberpunk. So here it is, Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p, low settings, FSR is set to performance, and we're not using frame gen right now. We're over that 60 FPS mark. We're seeing an average of around 66, but there's a lot more that we can get out of this because pressing Alt-R on your keyboard will open the AMD software. We're gonna enable frame generation. We're gonna enable frame gener... We're gonna enable frame generation, and this will dramatically increase the performance. So basically what's happening here is it's inserting frames where there were no frames before. So an average of around 65 before, we're now seeing an average of around 92 FPS at a Cyberpunk 2077 on the Cybertruck Mini PC. So yeah, this little so yeah, this little thing can game and just to make it a bit easier on everybody, I'm going to go ahead and plug into my game capture. I've got more games that I wanted to test out here. Next one I wanted to test out here was Fallout 4. We're at medium settings, 1080p. Looking really good. We're seeing an average of around 72 FPS out of this game and locking it down at 60 is definitely the way to go with this. But since I'm connected to a 120 Hertz display, we can go on up from there. Here's one of my favorite games right now. We're at 1080p. FSR is set to balanced medium settings and you can see we're getting a pretty decent frame rate and that's because I am using AMD's frame gen technology. It's turned on from the settings. Nixus added this to most of their games. They Nixus added this to most of their games. They ported over to PC recently and it did come day one with this one, but it makes a world of difference on these iGPUs. When you just don't have a beefy GPU and you want to play your game, frame gen is a great option. Red Dead 2. Now it's been a while since I've tested in-game performance. I usually run the benchmark with systems like this. I'm using the Vulcan back end. We can swap over to DX12 and then use frame gen here, but I don't think we really need. I'm at 1080p. FSR is set to balance, low settings. And with the settings, we got that slider bar. We're two notches over from the lowest of the low. And we're seeing an average of around 61 FPS. 
And finally, we've got Horizon Forbidden West. This is one of those on an iGPU. You definitely have to drop that resolution down, even if you're using frame gen. Where at low settings, FSR is set to balance 900p. Taking FSR to performance would net us a better frame rate, but with this game here and even the first Horizon, FSR at performance looks horrible even at 1080p. So yeah, overall, I mean, we've got a pretty powerful little mini PC shoved inside of a Cybertruck. With that Ryzen 7 8845HS, it'll get all of your everyday tasks done. And as you saw, depending on the settings you use, you can actually game on this Cybertruck mini PC. Is this for everybody? Of course not, but if you're a big fan of the Cybertruck, this could be appealing to you. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description to their upcoming Indiegogo. They will have two different variants on offer, one with the Ryzen 8000, that's the one we took a look at, and they've also got a Ryzen 7000 version, which I suspect might be a bit cheaper, but right now there is no word on pricing for this unit, so I'm not exactly sure what the MSRP is going to be on this system. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to see anything else running on the Cybertruck, let me know in the comments. Like always, thanks for watching.